This short video is going to show you how to use the Home for the Holidays number two mini project to create a layout similar to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the project sheet here and we're going to create a layout that's somewhere between this trivet candle holder with the holly on it and this one here with the uh, round ribbon on it. Uh, seeing as you're using a spire, you, um, when you bring in the piece of 3D clip art for the round ribbon, it's actually a group of components. So it's actually four of the ribbon number eights in a circle and they do line up perfectly. So we're going to use that um, group to help us lay this out. If you're not using a spire, then you can just lay out um, uh, the, the two ribbons we're going to use using just the ribbon number eight. Okay, we're going to open up a spire and we're going to start a uh, new file and we are going to create a trivet that's going to fit a three inch diameter candle. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip over to the CNC Mini Projects website and we're on the Home for the Holidays project page and we're going to scroll down and underneath the in case you need there's a sizing chart. Now this sizing chart is included in the zip file if you choose to purchase Home for the Holidays number two. We're going to go over this really quick. Um, the first thing is that uh, make sure to measure your candle, first of all, and um, or check the packaging to make sure uh, of the proper socket size that you need to fit your candle. Um, if you happen to have access to the um, LED uh, pillar candles, they might be a great option. Um, that way they're a little safer. Of course, you're, it's a candle, so it's going to be lit. So uh, make sure that you follow the um, safe candle burning practices, just pretty much common sense. If you're going to make the trivet fit a uh, tapered candle, uh, most tapered candles are um, three quarters of an inch in diameter, three quarters of an inch in diameter. And um, that would require a trivet of, of 1.6 inches round, which might make for an unstable candle depending on the height of the actual candle. So um, a couple things that you may want to add a little bit more base to your trivet candle holder to make it a little bit more weighty or actually cut down the height of your tapered candle. Um, that might be a bit of trial and error you're going to have to do. For us right now, um, we are going to look over at our chart. So we need a socket size that will fit a three inch candle. So our base needs to be scaled up to be 6.4 inches across. So let's flip back to a spire. And knowing that we need a 6.4 inch diameter uh, trivet, then we need to make the workspace obviously bigger than that. So let's go ahead with uh, seven inches, seven inches. We're gonna make, uh, we're gonna use a piece of material that's one inch thick. Um, the actual thickness of your trivet will depend on the size it is. And in this particular case, a a 6 8 inch um, tall trivet uh, visually looks pretty nice. So that's what we're going to shoot for. Make sure our datum is in the center. We're going to make sure our units are set to inches and our resolution is three times slower. So we're going to click OK. Flip over to our 3D clip art tab and I've already uh, downloaded and unzipped and put the home for the holidays uh, mini project where it belongs with my other mini projects. And we are going to drag in the round trivet. So first of all, we're going to press F9. That's going to center it. We're going to flip over to our, um, oh, sorry, we're going to press T on the keyboard because we need to size it up to be 6.4 inches in diameter. So we're going to go with 6.4. Click Apply. Close that down. We're going to flip to our 3D view, and I'll point something out to you that the socket on this trivet has a bit of draft added to it already. That gives you a bit of wiggle room when you're putting your candle in. So we're going to make sure that this is the proper size for a three inch candle. So we're going to take a, a circle. We're going to make it three inches in diameter. We're going to create that, close that down. And in this case, it happened to pop it right in the center. But if not, if it happens to be off center, then just press F9 and it will center it for you. And you'll see that that circle lays just on the inside of the draft. So this trivet is perfect for fitting the three inch diameter candle into. Now let's go ahead and scale our trivet up. 
click our modeling tab, we're going to go to our, our component properties, and we are going to set this to 5 eighths of an inch, which is 0.625, and we're going to add a base height of 0.125. Now if we take a look at our 3D view, that's a pretty decent, substantial looking base for a 3 inch trivet. And it shouldn't tip over, it's pretty wide, so that should be great. Click close. Flip to our 3D clip art tab. Now we're going to add in our ribbon. And again, um, we're using a spire. So the actual ribbon that's round number one is actually made up. It's a group of components, four uh, components. Um, that's the ribbon number eight in a circle. Um, and they connect up rather nicely. So um, seeing as using a, sp using a spire, it's a nice bonus. If you're not using a spire, then you've got the, the segment that you can use to make this up if you want to. Flip to our 2D view and let's drag in the ribbon. We're going to press F9. It's going to center it. And we're going to hold down our shift key and grab this sizing handle and we're going to size it down so it fits in there nice and neat. Flip to our 3D view. We'll make sure that we're okay. Looks pretty good to me. We want to make sure that our tool can get in between here. So we might want to just size it up just a hair. So it gives us the best chance to get that tool in there in that's around here and then also around down here. And then we're going to go ahead and flip to our modeling tab and we're going to make sure that the height of that is correct. So we're going to make this 0.2, it's our shape height, and we're going to add a teeny bit of, of a base to it just to kind of pop it off the back. We'll close that down and that looks great. Now the group that we brought in, it's been added to our trivet already. So if we open up our group, you'll see that the group has the four components I spoke about. Uh, there's the ribbon bottom, ribbon left, ribbon top, ribbon right, ribbon right, excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and ungroup that. And we're going to delete off the left and the right. So holding down, let's do that again. The left, holding down the control key, you can also select the right bit. And we're going to press delete on the keyboard, and those two are gone now. And we can take a look. Now you'll see that they've disappeared. That's because inside of that group, the actual ribbon bits have been merged together. So we're going to regroup those, holding down the shift key, selecting both of those components. Right click. We're going to group it. And then we're going to change the combine mode of this group to add, and it'll pop them back up again on top of our trivet. Now we're going to add in some holly on the left and the right side. So we're going to flip to our clip art again, go to our 2D view. Actually, let's just center this up so it looks better in our 2D view. Go back to our clip art tab. We're going to bring in our holly sprig, and we're going to bring in our, hol our holly leaf. And now we're just going to lay this out quickly. So we want this um, holly sprig and leaf to wrap around in a circle um, our trivet. So we're going to go ahead and rotate the leaf for a sec. We're going to go to our modeling tab and we're going to flip this in the center. We don't want to create a copy, so we unclick that. That's great. And then we're just going to place it where roughly where I think it needs to be. It's a much bigger leaf than the other one, so we're going to scale it down just a hair. We'll zoom out a bit just to make sure it's looking better. Let's scale it down a bit more. And then we're going to turn it a bit. And we're not going to know whether it fits or not until we actually lay it on top of the, uh, the trivet. So we're holding on the shift key. I've selected both of these components. Scale it down. And I'm going to lay it right on top of the ribbon, although that's not where it's going to be in the end. That's just going to be there for reference. Okay, let's just go ahead and re-select the leaf, and let's just angle it around a bit more so it ends up rotating a bit. We might need to turn the sprig slightly to fit it in there. Maybe grab both using the shift key again and rotate those guys around. We're going to need to scale it down because it needs to fit in at least the width of this, the ribbon, maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, that looks pretty good in the 2D view. So now we want to flip back over to the 3D view and we want to make sure that the layout looks good. So let's flip to our 3D view 
and we're actually going to hide the round trivet and the bottom or the ribbons and we need to now work with the the holly so we're going to make sure that these are the combined modes for both of these are set to merge and that looks pretty decent now if we not select anything if we double click out here in the on the job space you'll see that the uh, the detail of the of the leaf is not nearly as much as what it is for the other uh, leaf that's attached to the berries so let's just go ahead and scale that up a little bit to make it look better let's close that off click that looks much better now so let's go ahead and select these two guys and we're going to group these together now, if you wanted to, you could export this by right-clicking on it as a piece of 3D clip. If you're going to use it in the future, this layout, which might be a good idea to add it to your clip art library or add it to your, your mini project. And now we're going to go ahead and right-click. We need to make sure that the combine mode is set to add, because if it's set to merge, you won't be able to see it. It'll actually merge into the trivet. So we're going to reshow the round trivet and the ribbon. Flip to our 2D view. Zoom out. And if we click on the, the center handle, we can move the rotation point to the center of our job. And holding down the shift key, we can in incrementally move around the circle. And we're going to grab this guy, and holding down the shift key and the control key, we can make a copy of it all in one throw around the model, around the layout. Up to our 3D view, that looks pretty decent. Now we just need to work on the Z height of these two pieces. So let's just go ahead, holding down the shift key, grab both of those. Let's change our shape height to be 0.2. And again, we're going to add a bit of a start height just to pop it off the back a little bit. Close that down. Take a look at our 3D view. And I think that's a pretty dandy looking trivet. Okay, now all we need to do is lay some text onto these two ribbons. Let's go ahead to our 2D view. Let's go to our drawing tab. And we're going to need to draw a circle because we need a line segment here that we can um, lay our text onto. So we're going to draw a circle. And we're just going to draw it anywhere here randomly. Apply. Close. We're going to press F9. Oh, we're going to select it first, then press F9, then press T. That's going to allow us to transform it. Holding down the Shift key while I drag the handle, I can size it up so that it lands on my ribbon just about where I want it to be, right about there. Click Close. And now I need to go in and trim this, this line down. So we're going to select the line, zoom in. We're going to press N on the keyboard. That will bring us into node mode. We're going to insert in a point. That's the I key. And we're going to insert a point over here as well, approximately the same distance. Then we're going to hit the C key. That'll cut it and cut it. And now if we press delete, all we have left is just the line segment that we need. Let's press escape and go back to our selection tool. We're going to double click on that. Again, move our center point to the center. And we are going to hold down the shift key and the control key. And we're going to flip that guy up there. So now we have our two lines to lay out our text on. Now we're going to lay out our text. So the first text we're going to make is going to say friends. And we're going to use Pupcat. And we're going to make sure it's bold. And we're going to try 5.5 inches. We're going to click apply. And the best way to do this is to, once you have the text in your work area, just to drag it down on top of your ribbon to make sure that it's the right height. That seems pretty fair. So we're going to close that. Now we're going to wrap that text to this curve. So holding down the shift key, I'm going to grab both of those guys, click on wrap text along curve, and we're just going to click apply and see if the settings that we have here from before work. And then they work great. Let's close that down. And now we need to just fix our line spacing or our, our letter spacing. So if we click um, edit text spacing and curve, and we select the friends text. If we hold down the shift key while clicking between the letters, it will move the letters apart for us to give us some nice space. What we're trying to avoid is anything that's right here, like up top there where the D was overlapping the N, and also give some nice spacing. So when our 
V carving happens. It looks good along with when we sand it down a bit. Um, we don't have these letters running in together. That looks great. Let's go back to our pick tool again. Now we're going to add some new text and we're going to call this family. Family. And we're going to apply. And it remembers the settings we had from before, so that's great. We're going to select the family text and, and the line. And we're going to go ahead and wrap the text on that. And we're going to go ahead and fix our letter spacing again. Holding down the shift. If you don't hold down the shift key, they come together, but we're going to hold down the shift key and, and separate them a bit better. You notice the Y kind of sprung like a spring there. You have to be careful of that. Sometimes these fonts will jump around a little bit. Perfect. Back to our pick tool. And that's zoom out. Now we're going to simulate this to look like V carving because we're not actually going to do tooling, but this will give, uh, you know, if you're sending this off for approval, a good idea of what this is going to look like once it's V carved. So we're going to select both pieces, pieces of text. We're going to click to our modeling tab and we are going to actually create a shape from the vectors. Now, uh, minus 35 of a pyramid angle with a space height of minus 0 0.02 gives you a good visual V carving effect. Flip to our 3D view. And there we go. Now you don't need to use the Pupcat text. You can use whatever you'd like. It's up to you. That's a pretty decent looking um, trivet. So there we go. I hope that was helpful. Let's go back to uh, cncminiproject.com and take a look at the project page for Home for the Holidays number two. Uh, we're just going to scroll down for a second and you'll see that um, we have some food for thought images here, which are some great inspiration for you to develop some of your own layouts if you'd like. There's the square trivet with the holly in it. Again, save the holly saved out as its own 3D clip after you have it assembled. This one is more of a straight version, where this is more of a curved version. Um, there's the square trivet with the, um, the square ribbon on it. Uh, again, this uh, in Aspire, this ribbon, when you bring it into your job layout um, is actually the four ribbons grouped together. So that makes it easy, super easy to edit. Just ungroup it and delete the ones you don't need. Make sure you group it back in, back together and make sure that you set the, the merge mode to be, uh, or the combined mode, excuse me, to add. This is another nice one too. This is a welcome sign um, for above your door with a neat ID. And you can see the way that these uh, ribbon number eights hook together and they can create a continuous um, sort of up and day, up and down ribbon. Uh, this is an advent calendar for advent, of course. And look, another couple of ideas here. We've got the, um, the round trivet with the round ribbon with the holly leaf in the corner to give it a little bit of interest. And then of course the holly sprig with one holly leaf. And if you add nothing together, then you can end up having quite a little section of holly. Now, if you get really fancy, you can go ahead and try and complete the hack, which is um, the round ribbon, the round trivet, the holly sprig, and the holly leaf, and then the fur wreath from the Home for the Holidays uh, number one mini project, and it makes quite a nice little, um, nice little deal here, and if you can... Uh, v carve some text on this and make a nice centerpiece for a table. Anyway, I hope that uh, helps.